Hello there, this is Tom. Today I'm going to show you a quick program that I made with Computercraft that will basically read your energy cells and it will calculate how much you're using per second and how much you have stored, um, which is optional and how much time it is uh, until the energy cell is full or until it's empty. So as you saw there quick um, it will show you how much you're producing. Uh, so by turning off any other power sources by flipping this lever because I have it set to um, do that as long as I flip this it will not output any power. You will see that it's currently producing about 60 k RF per second and it will be full in about 20 minutes or so. Um, just turn it on and it will output a lot to fill up the backup power. And if I'm doing the same here you will see that everything turned red which means uh, it will um, out, uh, show how much uh, I'm currently outputting because I'm not producing anything and how long it will take until my battery or energy cell here is empty which is about 80 to 90 minutes. Uh, so now I'm going to just show you how to set it up. It's pretty easy because I programmed an installer for it uh, but basically what you want to have is uh, your energy cells facing to, uh, towards each other uh, like this. So this is accepting power from the top and in outputting at the bottom and everyone is doing that. If you're doing it that way or if you're doing it this way it doesn't really matter as long as they're sending power to each other. It doesn't even matter what which energy cells you're using as long as you're configuring the total amount right which I'm going to show you. Um, how you're building it doesn't matter as long as, as I said, this is connected to each other. But I like to have the, mon uh, the terminal pretty close and I like to have uh, the monitors at the bottom. And the monitors at the top is optional, but um, um, which is displaying the total amount of power. Uh, but I like to have that shown so I can easily see it without actually just looking at this and calculating it out. So what you then want to do is get your wire wired modems and you want to place it on each of the components. So every energy cell needs one, every monitor needs one and of course the computer needs one. As long as they are connected to them, it doesn't matter uh, where it is, as long as everyone has their own. So we're going to play some networking cables to connect every single one of these. And now we will show the, the installer. So you will basically paste in just this program and this program only. Uh, and you can call it whatever you want. I like to call it installer because I can simply just reinstall by starting that program. And it will contact paste bin and the program should now be on this computer. Awesome. So we're just going to run the installer. And you will get this message. Oh, excuse me. Uh, which is warning you about um, uh, what programs that will be overwritten um, by installing this program. Uh, for instance, if you have a startup program or something already called var or p or something like that, you will just hit no and do edit, edit p or rename p to something else or startup to something else uh, or else you will lose that program. Uh, so keep that in mind so you don't accidentally lose your programs. So let's run this. Um, I will show this program in another video. 
Um, so basically, it will first rename uh, the computer or set a label to it. So if you accidentally pick it up, you will still have the program there. And it will aut automatically edit the P um, program, which is basically the peripheral program where all the peripherals are set. So cell is your um, energy cell peripherals and um, mon is the monitor um, variable for the monitor that is displaying the RF per second and S monitor is what's displaying the total RF stored in your system. Now we're getting into the most complicated uh, thing about this installing. It's getting this information. This will depend on um, the peripheral name that is given. Uh, as long as it, it as long as it is a thermal expansion energy cell, um, you just have to change these values. If it's something else, you might get problems because this program is not programmed for anything else. So what you want to go on and do is just click on this, right click on them, and you will get these numbers, 9, 10, 11, 12. And those are the ones you're going to replace in here. And you will just replace like this. I like to have it in the right order so it's easier to um, organize, have it organized. If, for instance, you have more than um, than four energy cells, you need to go at the back here and you need to place a comma and you have to write the peripheral dot wrap uh, cough uh, thermal e thermal expansion energy cell and then of course the number so I next would be 13 and you just close it and you have to do that for every single energy cell that you're placing in there and uh, same if you don't have as much as four uh, you don't have to remove them I think but uh, to be on the safe side you should just remove um, any extra information uh, because it could cause problems so the next is the RF per second monitor uh, which is basically the same you just right click and you will get monitor 4 and all you gotta do is replace this number right there. And then the next thing is, as I said, optional. And you do just basically the same. Right click, get the number, and replace it. And you save it and exit. Editing the variable information. Let's see what that's about. So the variable information is just some basic information uh, like colors and uh, the maximum RF in your storage system. So um, up is basically the color for the text when you're um, having more than zero RF per second and down is the color for when you have less than zero RF per second. So up is basically profit and down is basically loss. And this is the green color and this is the red color. You can change it if you want, but I prefer green and red. Um, the next thing is the max energy storage. You have to change this number depending on what your maximum energy storage is. So this is five, 50 million. 50 million plus 50 million plus 50 million which is 200 million um, but if um, you have like two more it will be 300 million and then you have to change it or if you have two less you have to change it as well it's important unless you will get wrong calculations and everything will just be messed up messed up and again 
if and when you're done you just hit control save control exit and you can now you can edit the settings later by editing the files just by typing edit uh, p or var and uh, thank you for installing Tom's energy reader and press any key to reboot computer and you will get an error message because there's some placeholding variables that needs information which it doesn't get at the beginning so it will just run two times so we're going to place a resonant energy cell on top which is going to output at the bot bottom like that and we're going to output yeah 10,000 RF per tick which is about 240,000 uh, RF per second and we will have a full we will have a full storage system in about 30 minutes or so and we can see that if we are uh, how are we going to do that break it we're going to insert this now it's currently not inputting anything and we have 6 million RF or more than that but it's around um, rounding it uh, we're placing this here and you can see we will have to get the maximum inputs and you can see that we're outputting um, 240 RF per second and it's less than a minute until it's empty so that's basically what I have for this program right now uh, quickly I just want to talk a little bit about future plans for what I want to try out uh, I want to add an auto updater to this so you don't have to update yourself which will I think I'm going to try to make it to the 1.1 patch you might even watch this and you will automatically download the 1.1 patch of this uh, because it might be out already I don't know yet and um, that will automatically update the system if it's a newer update out and the change log will might be shown on this screen um, yeah, when it's out uh, you have to automatically update then if um, if um, if necessary uh, so you can uh, uh, easily update it but by just uh, running the installer program again and you will get same warning message but it will patch and fix itself if that doesn't happen I'm going to leave a new paste bin on the video so you can easily get the newest uh, install because I might need to add some new programs and stuff uh, but hopefully I don't need to do that um, so future plans besides an auto updater is um, the the emailing system that I was thinking about which is if you are currently it will take notes of how much energy you're producing at max and minimum and if for some reason you are producing less energy and you're about to run out or it's been taking that and that long since this um, storage had something it will mail you um, uh, send you an email and telling you that hey we got a problem uh, your system is currently losing a lot of problems and losing a lot of power I mean and you might want to go on there and and um, uh, do something about it. Um, I will not have as much problem with that because I have a backup system, but I could al also do it so that it will drain from the backup system if necessary, if something like that happens. Uh, but I want to have your guys' feedback on that if you think that's a good idea or not. Um, uh, but yeah, that's basically all I have for 
uh, this video. Uh, thanks for watching and tell me if you have any problems with this. Uh, and um, yeah, um, thanks for watching and yeah, ask questions if you have them. And if you find a bug, please leave a comment and telling me, uh, and I can fix it as fast as fast as possible. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.